What a week. What a week. Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Hope you've been doing well. We've got a lot going on here, Speed Culture Studios. Been a very, very busy week. It's been a busy last couple of months. So this week in particular has been very busy and this week specifically has been very unique. A week unlike any week I've ever experienced in my life. Now you might be wondering what the hell I'm talking about. Well, So first of all, I've got a lot of stuff done. I've had a lot of parts come in for the cars lately, so I've been doing a lot of uh, installation, test review videos. I haven't been vlogging much. And that was sort of the whole purpose of this channel in the in the very beginning. Believe it or not, this channel was never really intended to be a, a do-it-yourself installation parts channel. Just really wanted to kind of document things, you know, as uh, I participate in car events and kind of things in this speed culture, right? But nonetheless, thought we'd do a little vlogging today. Um, got, like I said, a lot of stuff coming in. We got some wheels for the Z, new wheel sponsor sponsorship uh, from Cosmos Racing, which is really sick. Got another really awesome partnership that I want to tell you guys about. Um, that will probably be I think there's a, a little bit of a delay. Something has to be custom made, so um, it'll that'll be in probably in two or three weeks. Um, so it'll be a little bit of time, but stick around. Really exciting stuff coming for the channel, so I'm pretty pumped about that. So uh, I've been doing some installations, uh, a lot of stuff going on, so it's just been busy there, uh, really busy with work. I was I spent last week all week in Mississippi, so I didn't have any time to, to reach out to anybody or try to get Get, get together with anybody but hopefully I can do some more traveling this summer and and uh, actually meet some folks in person too but no time in Mississippi to, to do that this last week uh, but summer's just starting um, but when I say that this was the craziest most unique one of the worst weeks of my life uh, I'm not exaggerating I don't know if you guys have ever served on jury duty or gotten a jury duty notice. I've gotten a jury duty notice before, I think like last year. Uh, you know, you fill out the things or you have to call in and then eventually nothing comes of it. Um, I got a jury duty notice about a month ago. Uh, said you have to have this form in by this date. I signed it, filled it out, sent it in. Uh, but it said basically you have to report to the courthouse on Monday, uh, May Monday, May 9th by nine o'clock a.m. And that was it. So I did. I, I had to report. You know, there's 100 or 150 people there, all there for jury duty. You might get selected. You might not. There were a couple court cases going on, one criminal, one civil. It's like, okay, well, we'll ride this thing out. They said, there's basically no way you're going to get out of this week of jury duty. Um, if you, if there's a, some crazy exemption that you can have or that, you, that you'd be granted, you'd just be pushed to later on. So I'm like, whatever, you know, I, I'm here, let's do it. It's jury duty, it's part of life, part of being an American citizen, the judicial system depends on it. Uh, so I just hung out, I uh, got pulled into the, the first 40, they separated us into groups of 40, pulled you into the, the courthouse where these uh, lawyers determined whether or not you were going to potentially be part of the case. Um, the first case that was up was the criminal case, and I was selected, selected to be part of the jury. So, wow, okay. The crazy thing is, is that the trial was for a case, um, homicide by child abuse. Oh my God, you gotta be kidding me. If you guys have been following along or following national news lately, there was a case where a 30-year-old woman Former winner of, uh, I think it's like TLCs or HGTV, some some one of those channels, Discovery Channel, something or other, uh, worst cooks in America. Former winner of the show, thirty-year-old woman, had three foster children, one of which was a three-year-old little girl. She beat that child to death with a belt. Uh, she pled not guilty, so we went through this whole thing week long trial hearing testimony seeing pictures seeing autopsy images seeing body cam footage uh it was unbelievable i can only imagine i, I mean I, I 
I feel like I'm a pretty emotionally stable person, emotionally strong. I've watched a lot of documentaries. Uh, you know, I studied uh, biology and medicine and stuff like that in, in high school and in college. Uh, you know, I've, I've, I've seen stuff. I've seen stuff. Um, this is unlike anything I've, I've ever seen. The judge actually said in her 14 or 15 years of being a, a trial judge, she's seen a lot of child abuse cases and she's never seen anything like this. I, I, I mean, brutal, sad, brutal. Um, the only thing that like the coroner or the medical examiner could liken it to is the only, the only time they've seen bruising like this was when someone was hit by a car. Uh, unbelievable. So I don't, I don't want to get too graphic and I don't want to share any, I mean, like I understand how people, how jurors in cases like this can leave with PTSD. And that's what I was saying. I feel like I'm pretty emotionally stable, emotionally tough. Um, and I've seen crazy stuff, you know, through my studies and working on cadavers and, and dissecting things and human lungs and, you know, like holding things. Uh, you know, I've seen stuff like that, but when you know that this little girl was beaten to death and then you're looking at these pictures and listening to the doctors talk about how severe the injuries were. Uh, I mean, and it, it was draining, emotionally draining. And on top of that, you're finding somebody guilty of a crime so heinous, knowing that she's facing 20 years to life in prison, which ultimately, if you've seen the news, she was sentenced to life in prison. Prison. We found her guilty. Uh, no question about it. And the judge said, because of how severe the, although there were no signs of previous um, child abuse, although when you put everything together and kind of analyze some of the information that we've seen, there was definitely some abuse of some, of, of some kind going on in that household. Um, uh, but that's neither here nor there. Um, but the judge said after seeing how severe this was, there was no other option other than life in prison. So that's what this chick got. Uh, it was something crazy to be part of. All of the jurors agreed that we felt good about the decision because it was the right decision. Uh, but you definitely don't feel good about putting somebody away for the rest of their life. We saw this crazy stuff and, and we decided amongst ourselves that she was guilty of this crime and potentially facing life in prison. So although the right decision was reached, you never feel good about locking somebody up forever, uh, no matter how heinous the crime. And it was, I mean, if anybody deserves to go to prison for the rest of their life, it's definitely this person. But when I say it was the craziest, most insane week of my life, definitely, definitely was. It was just, it was insane. If you guys are interested in learning more about that case, check out Ariel Robinson, South Carolina, Ariel Robinson, Greenville, South Carolina, or just look up uh, Food Network. That's what it is, Food Network Star Murder. Just Google that and you'll find the case. Uh, pretty insane, pretty intense. run to the store and get butter. Butter costs $7.39 for four sticks. One little box of four sticks of butter, $7.39. What the fuck is going on here? Regular unleaded fuel was $4.29 a gallon. I know there's people in California and New York saying, oh, it's almost $6, almost blah, blah, blah. South Carolina is the 40th lowest, 40th highest. <laughs> it is 10 states from the bottom for the lowest median high household income at like fifty six thousand fifty six thousand dollars a year per household it it's crazy it's 40th 40th and gas is four dollars and 29 cents it, it's crazy it doesn't compare it doesn't compare to some of these states i made a reel the other day sort of asking what what's gas everybody tells me what gas prices are in their area i, I got it but my question was what are gas prices in your area compared to your median household income? I, I'd like to know that. I mean, I'm just sort of interested in that in that ratio. What's the comparison? Four dollars and you know, if you're in an area where you're paying five dollars and fifty cents a gallon for gas, but the median household income is like eighty thousand dollars, it doesn't really compare. Anyway, this is kind of crazy. It's a lot. I mean, inflation is insane. The housing market is just wild as hell. Our home value has gone way up since we moved into this neighborhood, which is fantastic. We're pr really trying to figure out what to do, but we're trying to figure out how we can sell our house, take advantage of the equity that we have in our home, 
and not have to dump it into a money that's all or into another house um, that's super inflated in value because that's the problem now you, you sell your house and you make a bunch of money but then you're looking for a place to live that is super expensive and it's not even as nice as what you just left because all the houses are inflated uh, rates are going up but anyway we're trying to figure out how we can take advantage of that uh, the only thing we can really think about is sell and like live in a camper or something for a year or two until the market crashes and we can buy a house for cheap uh, but then what do we do with all our stuff and i don't care about selling furniture and, and tvs and all that crap but i i need my cars and i need my tools i need my garage stuff but if you don't have a place to put all of it what are you supposed to do so i don't know if i get a storage unit and put my vehicles in or rent a shop or something but that's going to eat away at that money that we do make so i don't want to do that long term the other thing i thought about is shit let's just sell everything sell the house, buy a camper, pay off all our debt, and then we'll quit our jobs and just like travel and vlog that, you know, kind of document that whole, that whole life situation. Would you guys be interested in watching something like that? If you are, if you think that something like that would blow up and we could do that for a living, I'm all, I'm all for it. But my fear would be we start doing that and nobody watches it. Then we have no income and we burn through all the money that we made on our house and we're kind of like, you're in a position where you haven't worked for six months or a year. You don't have any money left over. Uh, you don't have any debt. That'd be cool. But whew, leap of faith. That's what my wife says. Let's take a leap of faith. Uh, maybe we'll do it. What do you guys think about that?